Joining us live is Barrister Jide Ologun to throw more light on this issue. Thank you, Barrister Jide, for joining us on the, on the news tonight. Thank you, too. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing tonight? Great. Make us understand why former Abia State Governor Oji Kalu is still in prison despite the Supreme Court order. A warrant for release of the former director of finance and account of um, Abia State House, Udo Dogu, was also was convic convicted along with former Governor Oji Kalu, has been issued. And how do you react to these two issues? You know, it's clear on the face of the whole matter. Kalu did not present a case before the apex court. It was the uh, the other person, Ude Udeugu, that presented a case before the apex court. And the court made specific reference to his own case, agreeing that when he was convicted, the Justice Mohammed Idris did not have the capacity to convict him since he's been elevated to the Court of Appeal, you know, when that took place in the Federal High Court. And the Apex Court is saying that a retrial should be carried out. But like we say, you cannot reap where you have not sown. So that was exclusively in the favor of Ude Udeogu, who do <clears throat> was jointly convicted with Uzo Kalu, the former governor of Abia State, Uzo getting about 12 years for a jail term, and Udeogu about 10 years for a fraud involving to two of them when uh, Uzo was the governor of Abia State. <clears throat> so what Uzo Kalu can do now is to approach the courts. And um, of course, we expect that given this precedent that we have, that his own case, we should not be different. So what we happen is that the Apex Court will also pronounce a call for retrial. And the matter we have to go back to the Federal High Court for proper um, prosecution. Now, so that is where we yeah. are now, right now. The court, that, that, despite the court order, um, Carlo is still, still in prison. And the prison authorities has given an indication that it has not received any court order to that effect. What is the legality of this and what do you say? It's, it's so clear. It's like you have two parties here who were defendants. The two of them were defendants at the Federal High Court before Justice Idris. And they were convicted. And one of them has gone to court to say no. The Federal High Court judge did not have the capacity to convict him. And the, court of, uh, the Supreme Court upheld that argument and cancelling the conviction in the Federal High Court and ordering that he should be released. But he made that application before the courts on his own. So Carlos' lawyer should also approach the Apex Court. He has appealed anyway, but let the Apex Court now pronounce that Carlos also can be released. These are two different individuals. And of course, Carlos should not be expected to benefit from a pronouncement that is in favor of the second defendant, even though the two of them were brought before the court for prosecution. So what he can do through his lawyers is to quickly also approach the apex court and say, okay, you've done this for my colleague in court now. So why don't you also order my retrial? And that probably will set him off the hook of the prisons. But as we speak now, what has happened is that the federal high court in Lagos, you know, has issued a warrant of release. And of course, uh, the Udeogu has been released, but not for Uzo Kalu. It's a very clear matter, but I believe his lawyers know what to do. Now talk about his lawyers approaching um, the Apex court. What, what are the chances? What chance do they stand for his release or his bail in this situation? You know, like I have said, if Udeogu, under the same circumstances that he were com was convicted, got a release, a retrial this time around. Uzo Kalu should also get that. But don't let us forget what happened in Lagos recently, where Akindele was convicted by the Lagos court for violating the social distance and the directives of the COVID-19. Meanwhile, other parties who were in the same circumstances were pardoned somehow, subject to some understandings. So uh, you cannot really be so strict on where the court will move. But so to say, we expect that if Udeogu has been released from prison now 
on the order that there should be a retrial uh, at the Federal High Court, Uzokalu, who falls under the same circumstances that led to the conviction of Udogu, should also enjoy from that uh, pronouncement. But it has to be specifically directed at him. And like I said, the, the, the lawyers, the defendant and uh, lawyer know how, what to do at the appellate level. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, intends to present its case for retrial following the court order. Is this not amounting to a repetition of court processes, waste of time and resources, knowing fully well that justice could have been served in a forced trial? Uh, not, not at all. If you look at Section 15, Subsection 5 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended, it, it says that the state shall abolish corruption and all abuse of power. So if we are fighting corruption, what the Apex Court is saying is that since the justice has been lifted from the Federal High Court to uh, the Court of Appeal, even though he was now instructed to go back and attend to the case, that that cannot stand, declaring the trial, the prosecution, null and void. So it is not cancelling the conviction, so to say, whether they committed the crime or not. So what we happen now is that during the retrial, when the prosecution comes in again, the rule of uh, the presumption of innocence is still there. The EFCC will have to prove the case beyond all reasonable doubt. And if Kalu and even Udeogu, this Udeogu that has been released now for the trial, is he's uh, pronounced guilty by the court, he will still go back to jail. And so it, it does not you know, stop dealing with the substantive matter of crime. And then, um, of course, what is involved in this allegation is about 7.56 billion naira, you know, allegedly uh, laundered by a fraud against Abia state government. And recall also that the company of uh, Uzokalu profited some assets to the federal government. And, you know, so the, the, the issue of crime is not being thrown away here now. This is more or less like a procedural issue that, okay, the justice that uh, declared you guilty did not have the capacity in the eyes of the law, simply so to say, to declare you guilty. But you can go back to that court. What the Federal High Court should do now is to get a justice that can competently handle the matter. And whatever conclusion the justice comes to, we stand. So the burden of proof under the Nigerian law, the onus of proof is on the prosecutor to prove the case beyond all reasonable doubt. So it's, it's not for the defendant to, uh, to, he has to defend himself, but then the court, the, the, the court will be relying more on what the prosecutor can, can deliver. And in the absence of diligent prosecution, the accused may be left off the hook, like I said earlier, in the criminal uh, justice value chain, right. the accused person is presumed innocent until the case against him has been proved beyond all reasonable doubt and underscore all. So there is need for diligent prosecution. And of course, having gone on to prosecute, we expect and believe that there must have been proper investigation that led to the prosecution. And we also expect that there will be a committed uh, judiciary because those are the three key elements in the criminal justice uh, platform. All right. Bryce Sejidu Logo, it's been a pleasure having you join us on News on the Hour and thank you for your contribution. Thank you. God bless Nigeria.